Next offering is hit deep to left field. And that ball is going to be out of here as left fielder Santino Panaro just turns and watches that one go over the left field wall. So just like last night, Rebels quickly find themselves behind two to nothing with no outs. Last night, Austin Cates was in the same predicament, but came back and ended up shutting out the Bulldogs for the rest of the game as he went seven innings and registered 12 strikeouts. Chris two and two with one out, and he hits one into the gap. Great play by the first baseman, Tommy Hoffey, over there to smother that early. He's going to swing away, and that ball's going to be hit down the line. And this is going to score Gray from second as Panaro drops the ball in left field. And that's going to allow another Bulldog runner to come in. And that's going to be a stand-up double for McKernan with two RBI. So with the infield pulled in, that ball was hit sharply just inside the bag at third. Dittmar, but his hitting streak was... And that ball's hit deep into right field, and that's going to be trouble as that ball is off the wall at the 400 mark, and Pepe's going to have a stand-up double and RBI. Bulldogs score another run, and the Rebels fall behind 5-1 to one here. A runner at second base, Tommy Hoffey, Bulldog first baseman, slaps one into left field, and that's going to be another run scored for the Bulldogs. It's Tommy Hoffey, round second, and he's going to get in standing up. So another stand-up double for the Bulldogs. The wheels are falling off. Fastball is hit deep into right field. Higgins goes back, and that's going to be out of here for a three-run home run for Ben Newton. So it's just gone from bad to worse for the Rebels as they now fall behind. Nine to one. That was a no doubter as Higgins just turned and watched that thing go over the outfield wall at the 370 mark. Great additions to the Rebel lineup this year as he hammers one. This ball is going to get out of here, and that's the way you get things rolling. Bailey Seeger with a home run over the 375 mark in left field. So the Rebels will be looking to claw their way back in, but that's a good way to get things started. Try to get things rolling again for the Rebels. At this point, they're going to need a lot to get back into this one. The box for the Rebels. Ryland Charles hits one deep to right field, and that's going to get out of here quick. Again, two home runs now for the Rebels in the bottom of the second inning. So Ryland Charles comes up aggressive as he did last night and is able to get that one over the 335 mark as it just stays foul excuse me fair situation last night where we saw the Bulldogs have some type of play on next pitch is lifted down the right field line Kate Higgins gives chase he's going to catch that ball into fair ter foul territory that's going to allow the runner to advance from third and that's going to be another run for the Bulldogs. Opposite field, big gap between right and center at this point. And he rips one, and that's going to be right at the left fielder. That's going to be caught by Pepe, but it's going to be deep enough for Higgy to score from third. Krizik holds at second. So we got an on the air by the Bulldogs. They claw their way back in as that ball is going to be slapped into the four hole and that's going to be a base hit. They're going to send the runner home. We're going to get a play at the plate, but it's going to be way too late. Isaac Rodriguez drives in another run for the Rebels as Ryland Charles comes keeping kids in state as Gray lifts one way up and that's going to stay just foul and that's going to be a home run for Murph Gray. As he goes down and golfs that one that stays just inside the fence down the left field line. So a leadoff walk comes back to bite Dylan Rogers as Murph Gray is able to golf that one over the left field wall. Bulldogs, the count is one and two with one out, runners on second and third. Curious checks the runners. 
That ball is tapped to third. It's going to get a runner home. Gunnar Myro throws over to first base as Gunnar Myro was playing deep at third base. The only play that he had was to first pretty much straight away. It's an 0-2 count. That ball is lifted into left field. That ball is way back. That ball is going to be out of here. And that's going to be a home run at the 400 yard, 400 foot mark here at Early Wilson Stadium. Austin Krizik is able to lift that one out of here, get it up into the jet stream. And that ball didn't make it over by much, but one of the deepest parts of the ballpark to get the Rebels on the board here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So we look at the numbers on that, that left the bat at 102 miles an hour at a 36 degree launch mark last night, but was able to really right the ship and go seven innings. That ball's lifted very similarly to left center, but that is gonna get up in the wind and that ball is gonna carry over the 375 mark. And that's gonna be a home run for Bobby Blanford. So just as we talk about Mercurius doing a really good job, Hunter Myro steps up hitting from the right side and he swings first pitch and that ball's lifted and that's gonna get over the left field wall for a home run. First pitch, aggressive hitting from Paul Myro. So after Ryland Charles leads off the inning with a slap single opposite field, Paul Myro pulls one down the, right, the left field line and that's gonna be two in the pitch. Way outside and that's gonna get all the way to the backstop and Overbay is gonna come in. There is a relay over to the pitcher Anderson, but it's too late. Overbay is able to slide in under the tag. Well, Sullivan swings and misses, and that's going to be the ball game. So a strikeout to end the ball game for the Rebels. That's going to be two wins in the series for Fresno State. So obviously not what the Rebels were looking for tonight. They look to bounce back after that tough loss last night.